Good evening, class. Here's some random thoughts and hallucinations. As always, I thank you in advance for your tolerance. Uh, my friend is delighted that I have sent her an emoticon of a wild boar. First, the Wright brothers invented the airplane, and now this. I'm not sure whether it's a wild boar or a warthog, actually, uh, which worries me because it means that I may not have learned my animals properly, and I should quit my job and go back to animal re-education camp. Actually, if I could, I'd rather go to dinosaur re-education camp because they've invented a lot of new ones recently that I don't feel responsible for or particularly comfortable with. Fortunately, we still have pterodactyls. And one day, beavers came out, came out of the lake and ate my mother's birch trees. At least that's what everybody thought. But as far as I'm concerned, it could have been pterodactyls. Nobody had ever seen beavers come out of the lake before, but nobody had seen any pterodactyls either. And since pterodactyls were or are carnivorous, they probably would have skipped the birch trees and focused on the meatball and sausage trees along the canal. <laughs> Unfortunately, there are no meatball or sausage trees along the canal anymore because they were all eaten by something in the middle of the night. That's why there are no pterodactyls, because they ate the trees and went away, which is probably why it was beavers that ate my mother's birch trees. There was also some talk of producing trees that grew both meatballs and sausages at the same time, but the scientist that was working on that project was eaten by a pterodactyl or quietly moved to Costa Rica. Anyway, the only reason I brought this up is because I really like saying the word pterodactyl and like the expression pterodactyl therapist even better. I'm also fascinated by birds because they can fly and go underwater and walk around and some can even talk and imitate squirrels. They can do calculus equations, however, which makes me feel much better about myself. And they shouldn't force you to take calculus anyway, or trigonometry. Birds, particularly pterodactyls, don't like trigonometry either. But herons, they have a lot of time on their hands, however, and spend much of it thinking about trigonometry equations while waiting for a minnow to swim by, but when they come up with a result, they usually find that they've left their pencil in a different suit. The one that had to go into the laundry because it was covered in duckweed and goose droppings. Puffins generally command higher wages than herons due to their level of specialization and due to the fact that, well, they're puffins. In a fight, the feisty puffin would be at a distinct disadvantage against the statuesque heron. But both would win the match in the end, as the heron would be busy fiddling with his slide rule and would eventually lose interest and fly away. In fact, the heron is usually too pre preoccupied to even notice the puffin. Interestingly enough, the heron can grow to be as tall as 11 feet or more. But at that point, it's hard to find a suitable tailor. So many herons get embarrassed and hide behind the poplar trees. <laughs> Either that or the herons hiding behind the trees could, in fact, be pterodactyls. <laughs> Chihuahuas are small dogs that taxonomically can be divided into two categories. Sweater-wearing and non-sweater-wearing. <laughs> the sweater-wearing genotypes can be further broken down into three subcategories. Argyle, orange with festive embroidered bone motif, or seasonal Halloween pumpkin design, and for special occasions, dinosaur costume. You may be asking yourself, what, what does the Chihuahua have to do with the heron? And you'd be correct in assuming that they both received their undergraduate, undergraduate degrees from Brandeis, even though they weren't in the same graduating class. The heron, for obvious reasons, spent two years at Cambridge, well, the Chihuahua did his postgraduate work at Dartmouth. And the Heron, as you already know, is published extensively in prestigious technical journals such as Algorithm Weekly and Dimensional Analysis in the 21st Century, a publication that helps physicists and mathematicians design festive outfits for herons in many sizes and colors because the herons were jealous of the Chihuahuas and he did a selection of sweaters as well. Thank you very much. There will be a test on this material on Friday. Yeah. <laughs>